gave it to him. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is Daniel, and I'm sitting here with Frank the Barber Almanza. We were just talking about a couple of things, his 10-ball ring game and the APA, and now we're here uh, about to sweat for the very first time. Actually, I'm kind of tickled right now. This is like a historic moment. Vilmos Foldish's very first broadcast of uh, One Pocket. One Pocket. Playing One on Pocket. On stream. <laughs> yeah. And this is only a one-game match. Uh, we're streaming live from Hard Times Billiards. It's the uh, monthly One Pocket tournament. And wow, what a great break by Jeff, huh? Well, it, uh, it it's a good break, but not uh, not something that you can't get out of. Because that 4 and 14 are pretty much locked up against each other. And uh, not wired up. Well, now he shot that ball like he knew how to play like one he pocket. Knew he was doing, yeah. <laughs> it's a, almost a, that was almost like an instinct, you know, like okay, let me just get all these balls to my side of the table. But I think he left a, a bank shot here. It looks pretty, very natural. Yeah. Uh, he's looking at it. He's analyzing. Is there a possibility that there's a kiss on it? Maybe there is. Uh, I'm not sure. There is another angle that you can see. Frank, if that, if that helps. I don't think the kiss is on. I think he can beat the kiss. I think he's got to go wide with the 13 if he wants to beat the kiss. Yeah, I, be I believe you're right. Yeah, he missed the kiss. He glanced against the 10. Um, so now Vilmos, with that 10 ball down at the bottom of the rail, he, he has kind of an easy hide, right? It, well, there's not too many ways you can hit that 10 ball and still be safe. He can't get behind the 13 the way it's sitting because he can't hit he can't hit the uh, short rail after the after hitting the 10. Up, oh, he doesn't want to come out too far. He'd he'd be leaving Jeff a bank. Yeah, now if, if Jeff banks this 10 ball and comes over and breaks up the four and 14, he's in going going to be in good position. Yeah. And I'm sure that's what he's got to do because he needs to open up that 4-14. Four and 14. And the cue ball's running into a safe area. Looks like he's he's banking the long rail. I think he wants to break the 14 and the 4 sure, up. Sure, he wants to bank this ball right into him. Yeah. Maybe into the 13. No, he wants to hit the 14. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's not what he wanted there. Opening up those two balls would have been huge, but they're still there. Well, I think this is Vilmo's third shot or so. And uh, he did get out of the break early, but now he's back in trouble again. I guess for a rotation player like Vilmos, uh, his favorite game is straight pool too, by the way. But, uh, oh, is that right? I didn't for, know that. For a player like Vilmos, though, you know, one pocket's a game where you're really gonna, you're really gonna get a sense of what their patience level is like, what their, you know, threshold of patience right. is. Yeah. Because uh, this game will take a while. Before something, you know, really starts happening sometimes. With two good players like this, though, one game doesn't really say a whole lot of anything, you know? It's true. It's a series of games that you can determine who's got the patient and who knows what to do. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, Interesting. I think he wired up the 14 ball now. Yeah, the 14 and the 4. They are wired. Yeah, he's, I don't know if that was a good shot. Well, <laughs> he doesn't really have an easy uh, route to those balls right now, but. No, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, in, a, in an inning or two, he might. 
see an opening. So Vilmos has to somehow address this issue. He also needs to get some balls on his side of the table. He wants to put this ball back into the stack after going off the three. Well, you called it. Yeah, but more another couple of inches. He was right there. Now he can kick underneath the stack, can't he? I, I think he wants. To, I think the good shot right now was to kick at the 14 ball. Yeah. Behind, yeah. just to uh, keep him from being wired up. Right. And take his chance of not giving up a bank on the 10. Oh, he. You know what? He 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 played a a different shot. He decided to just come up under the 13. Which is actually a pretty creative shot. Making the right decision sometimes is, yeah. is crucial in a, in a spot like this. See if he can do something with the 10 off the stack. Maybe uh, glance the ball for the bank. Yeah, I... Or, or, or bank the ball, or 10 ball straight. I don't think I like either one of those. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think I do either. Getting the stack any kind of way and open up one or two balls to your opponent's side is not a good idea. And actually what he could do is go off the back side of the 13 and go and get two or three rails behind the other side of the stack. You know what, that's what I was thinking, pass, go past the 14, you know, two rails. R right, yeah, and yeah. get back on the other yeah. side of the Shoot stack. Shoot the other direction, in other yeah. words, yeah. Like, get on the other side of the table and take a look at it. Yeah. But he's not gonna do that. He's gonna try to create. Yeah, I think he's trying to find a way to get the cue ball into the stack, two rails. Yeah. This is scary. He, he might open up the other side of the stack here for Vilmos, which would be to his advantage. Yeah, he, he opened up the balls a little. But Vilmos is walking over to see if he's got something on the 13 ball. <clears throat> if he does, then he's, he's in good position to, uh, to uh, turn the table over. Daniel, didn't you used to have a camera that had an overhead shot on the you table? You know, uh, I have in the past set that camera up, but I want you guys to know that it actually takes um, a day of preparation prior to coming out here. And I've <laughs> honestly just been so busy that uh, I, haven't, I haven't had the time to come out here early and set that camera up. I may actually set it up tonight for tomorrow's nine ball tournament. Oh, okay. But I do have, I do have a camera set up uh, along the wall here to the other side of the table as a, as a consolation. Well, I'm looking over here on the screen. Camera one, camera two, camera three. <laughs> <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> He needs to run the cue ball into the 10 ball if he wants this to happen. He's back in the 13 ball. You gotta go past that 10 ball. Oh, he's, he's back in the, he, he missed the scratch. Well, see now, he's actually helping Vilmos now because He's giving Vilmos an opportunity to take away this problem area that we were talking about earlier, right? Right. But he, he, well, he, um, oh, ooh, double kiss. I think he just uh, made a critical <laughs> mistake here. Gave up a bank on the on the 12 ball. And anywhere on the table that uh, the cue ball lays, he's got that combination, the 4-14 combo.
if he makes this ball, I think he's going to get at least at least five balls out of it. He's drawing. I don't know why he's drawing. To keep him scratching in the side. No, I think he, he he's just trying to hide behind the stack. Turned out to be a good shot. I can't, I can't see everything going on there, but I think he's looking at rolling the seven ball into the 12 and maybe kind of like playing a takeout. Yeah, if he, if he can play the seven ball and hit the left side of the 12 and stick the cue ball, that not only gets the, the uh, thir 12 and seven out of there, but it also breaks up that 14 ball that he's got wired up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, and no. Oh, he left the bank. He left actually a pretty easy bank. Yeah, he did. You know what they say, uh, those shots look good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he should have played for his holder. I think he should have cleared that out and broke out that combination. Okay. One down, seven to go. Well, I think he's gonna have to play the combo now. He plays the combo and comes back and moves the eight ball gently. He's got a lot of balls. Uh-huh. He's going for it. He's gotta be careful not to hit the 15 on the way in. No, he won't. He got a lot of room for it. Oh, he hit the 15 on the way in. He something. hit it way too you know, thin. He, yeah, he had, it was sitting real nice for the combo. I tell you what, that's disaster for him because, you know, the stack, the stack really no longer exists. Well, what do you think? He almost does have a shot on the nine ball if he wants to go that route. But I, I don't see where he's got a uh, guaranteed position on it. Hey, what do you what do you think? I mean, I know the the 14's not deep in the pocket, but what do you think of making the 14 and trying to keep the cue ball behind the four, you know, against the side rail? What do you think of that? Well, you know what? There's no reason to give up a ball there. That 14 ball is not. If you can take it out, yeah, take it out. Can yeah, easy, it can easily go out. Yeah. Only the only reason I say that is because now, see, he's left a bank on the 15. No, not necessarily because it's, yeah. not, it's a little off angle. The cue ball's coming out to the middle You're of the right. table. He'll right. give up a shot yeah. on that Yeah, Jeff, Jeff's not going to sell out by shooting that 15. No. Tables are turning. Yeah, but now he's looking, Jeff is looking to maybe play something or leave him long over on the... On the the other side of the table where that uh, it doubled him up on that 13 and 14. He's taking this shot on that I was we were talking about. He played cue ball, but uh, I think Vilmos can actually make that one ball. You think so? I think it might. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think, you know what, maybe uh, I he think the 14 ball sticking his nose out. If he's going to play anything, he's going to play the 14 ball. But uh, there's no reward behind it because uh, I don't see where he can get position. And taking the four ball is not an option either because he's going to sell out a bank on the 14. What's he looking at? The two, maybe two the three nine? ball. Or the maybe 11? The five ball. We're all guessing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, he missed that. He would have sold out. Yeah. Oof. But now he's in good position. Oh, he can run out. He can run out here now. He can run out the whole game. It's one ball apiece. He's looking pretty here. He might want to just 
play conservative, bank the four after this shot, right? No, not necessarily. You try to get on that three ball. I think he's got an angle to go around. You like that? Go, yeah, sure, because you you got a chance to run some balls if you can get on that three ball. Ah, okay. I try. Yeah. I wonder if this nine plays. I don't think it does, yeah, judging by the look if, on his if face. If he would have got around that ball and got a shot on that three ball, yeah. then he had, he had the rest of the balls for the game. I think he's going to... He'll probably just take the four ball out now. There's no reason. He, he, he should feel fortunate and lucky that he's in the game now. And uh, he's got a chance to, to stay in the game by getting that four ball out. From the position that he was in earlier where he was in a lot of trouble, he should be fortunate that uh, he's out of trouble, got a couple, three balls, mm -hmm. and now he can completely get out of trouble by removing that four ball, and then we got a brand new ball game. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we, we kind of already have a brand new ball game. I mean, the, the key shot for Jeff that he missed was that, well, uh, that, that dead ball, that, that dead 14. And he uh, had a lot of room to make that 14 combo. 4, yeah. And now Vilmos is taking out the last of it. Oh, that was nice. You know Vilmos, he, he yeah. knows this game a little bit. I played him in one of the mess tournaments. Yeah. And I went hill hill with him. Nice. But he finally overpowered me. Oh, I did that to him too. I uh, I won the first three games. I had him five zero. He came <laughs> back to beat me nine six. Ah, uh, he's a player with a lot of heart. He plays good. Well, what was uh, in Jeff's favor at one time has been turned around completely. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is this is Vilmos's game now. Yeah, for uh, Vilmos, he's got the uh, the, the nine and the three and the thirteen. They all go to his pocket. He's in, he's in a lot of trouble. And nothing goes to Jeff's pocket. Well, let's let's take a look at this. Like, what is the shot for Jeff right now? Yeah, I guess he's gonna bring this ball, hit this, and take the cue ball to the short rail and try to get him straight in on the four ball. Don't give him a shot to be able to take that four out of there, just like yeah, that. Yeah. If he gave him an angle on that four, he'd be able to take it out. But the way he left it there, it almost tells him that uh, that Bill Moss has to play off of a different ball and not the four. <laughs> Trying to take balls out that are like this or is difficult. I didn't give it up bank on the 13 ball. Oh, so four is going in the side. <clears throat> this is one of, this bank on this 13 ball is one of Santos' favorite shots. You know, Santos will hit this ball oh, and draw the ball bank. with left, with the the left English yeah. and yeah. spin the ball back. Mm -hmm. And he just hits that so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jeff isn't even thinking about. Well, he tried it. That was he tried shot. to hit it like Santos, but it was close. <coughs> oh, you is that the exact bank you were talking about? I thought you were talking about reverse cut. No, yeah, we come just straight into the corner, but you were talking about off the stack. No, no, straight, straight back. Oh, straight back. Straight into the pocket. Mm. But he didn't. He, he he hit it forward, and he wanted to yeah. because maybe uh, sometimes when you shoot a shot like that, like he did, is you want to make sure the cue ball does what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas Santos knows that yeah. that cue ball is going to do what it, he wants it to do. Yeah. So Santos would have cut it more and yeah. played it to the hole. Yeah, played it to the hole. Well. To, to Jeff's advantage, that, that worked out for him. Oh, this could be... Oh, man. Look at the cue ball, too. 
I thought he was gonna. I thought he was treading thin ice on that shot, but I guess not. Uh, he knew that cue ball was threading through there pretty good. Of course, a little while ago, he played a shot like that, and he made it, but had he not made it, he left a straight in right, shot on the right, four ball. Right, with the four ball, Because yeah. he did kiss the ball. This is where this is where you're. Uh, See, I don't like this. A little shot. clue, yeah. I, I this is where I, you, I you like realize it. that Vilmos needs to slow down a little bit. Oh my gosh. You made it go. <laughs> okay, maybe not. You know, when you shoot a shot like that, and you're going to leave the cue ball in that area there, and you're going to bank that ball, you got to bank it with enough speed so it gets out of there, so you don't give a uh, return bank on that ball. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you bank a ball like that, and then the, the uh, object ball doubles the points yeah and stays there and, and you know flicks out a little bit and yeah. then but you can't leaves a bank you can't control everything it's like somebody told me you know miss the pro side miss the pro side uh and uh i think it was scott frost he looked at me he said no just make it <laughs> <laughs> What well, could be better? What are you talking about? <laughs> miss the pro side. Yeah. <laughs> you're not missing anything. Yeah, when you're missing the pro side, you're going to miss. <laughs> Does he have a straight bank on the four ball? I don't know if I like Jeff's approach right now because if he keeps playing up table like this with his cue ball, eventually he's going to leave Vilmos a window or something. Well, he's giving up a ball here and there. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't hit that ball very well though. When, uh, on Jeff's last shot on that bank on that four ball, he did have a, a, a lane to get up there. If not make it, he could have laid it right next to the hole. A little closer. But he yeah. kind of overcut it a little bit. I think Jeff's going to take take this nine ball. Sure, out. he should take the nine yeah. ball. He can bank the nine ball to his hole. Yeah. As, long, as long as the cue ball doesn't hit the three ball, I think he's fine. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much I think a free shot as long as he as long as he doesn't hit the three or scratch. You know, like he's got to avoid the scratch. What's he looking at there? A three I'm railer of some know. kind? Is he looking at the four, three rails? I don't like that. No, that's no good. That's crazy town, sir. That's no good. <laughs> Let's see. Is he going to teach us a lesson? Whew, he sure is. You know, well... I didn't really like the shot, but he played it with very good speed. He played it good. He played it good. It was a good cue ball. Uh, personally, I think that's a good shot if you're gambling. In a tournament, I don't know, because in the tournament, you know, you just, especially like here, race to one, one yeah. little mistake and, uh, and you lost the game. But when you're gambling and you make a, make a mistake like that you and lose the game, well, you yeah, just come back and play the next game. Yeah. However, it turned out real well for him. <laughs> it's funny, all, all in all, you know, this is a pretty good game. And, uh, you know, you were saying earlier how one game you just really can't see somebody's true colors. We're, we're getting to see a we're little. We're getting to see quite a bit, yeah. Both sides of each, each person's game, and that's, and that's good. That will hurt him. He left a good bag on the floor, safe, and he come out for a shape on something else. You know, some players have trouble with these banks, though, you know, because they're... You're close to your work, but also they're far away from the rail that you're banking to. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to take the 11 one, he, He's playing it towards the four ball. Oh, 
Oh, the, he, that was nice. Yeah, he was playing it off the four ball because I don't think he had a good shot to go straight into it because the eight ball was in the way. Oh, Jeff, Jeff might be turning this rack around a little bit. Who, who broke? I think Jeff broke. Is Jeff, that right? Jeff yeah. broke, and he lost control of the rack. It, the score is five balls to one, Vilmos. Oh, yeah. Well, it all goes back to that combination that he missed. That was, yeah, that was yeah. uh, to me, I looked at it here on the screen and looked at it directly, and it looked like it was a routine combination. I think he just uh, overcut it and, and rubbed the 15 ball. I think Vilmos is trying to come off the four here. Oh, no. He went straight into the three. Huh. Well, that uh, worked out for him. Nice to have the skills to aim straight and hit what <laughs> yeah. you want to hit. I would have made the 11. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have those skills. Now I get down on a shot like that and I say, okay, pull the trigger and hope it works. Yeah. <laughs> I would have made the 11 and broke into the 10 and the 6 to leave a shot. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It looks to me like uh, Jeff is going to have to play off that level ball. He can't afford to take the cue ball up table because uh, the way we almost make pockets balls, that three ball is uh, pretty easy. And so he's got to play off the 11 ball. It's a nice shot to go is to play off the 11 ball. If you can get the skills to come back and get, put him, wedge him up against the nine ball, that would be a good shot. Well, could be a tall order, though. I think that's what he's trying to do, though. Yeah, kind of like that? Yeah, that was an extra shot. <laughs> kind of like that? Wow. Ooh, the handcuffs are on, sir. Uh, he's he's going to put a little pace into this shot, yeah. He hit the nine ball, and yeah, he, he still got away with yeah, it. I don't he, think he was trying to hit the nine ball. I don't know. I think he knew he was frozen. I think he knew it was coming out a little. But. No, I think that he was just trying to hit the... That uh, that four ball clean. If he didn't know he was hit that nine ball, he wouldn't have took that shot because there was too many ways to to sell out by rubbing that nine ball first. I don't. I don't know if this is worth it. No, I didn't like that at all. Not against a sharpshooter. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Well, he's only got one shot. It looks like it's a six ball. You're right, Frank. I think he has the six. And if he can shape up the nine balls, that'd be good. But for sure, he can get a bank on the nine ball. Mm -hmm. But if he can get behind that nine ball and shoot it straight in, then he's got a good chance to run some more balls. And if you see him jacking up, then we know that he's going for the nine ball straight in or you know without having to bank it but if he's leveling he's... if he's going to shoot with a level stick then he's then he's banking the nine ball or unless he's going to make the six and come back up go go forward and come back for the three ball or the four or the eleven Vilma Schwelder's playing for two now six balls to one you know, I have to say, Jeff's got to feel good about this game, win or lose, because, you know, he's hung in there. And he had he took some opportunities, took a flyer on that last shot, but... Yeah, well, you know, Vilmos here, you know, if I was playing this game, I'm in this position here, it is huge to get on seven. Yeah. I wouldn't jeopardize missing that nine ball or hanging it up by doing things with the cue ball. But if I needed a lot, yeah, then I'm, I'm shooting him to get some shape. He's got a shot on the 10 ball here. 
plan for one. Yeah, and I think he's going to protect it with the 11 and the 4 if you don't make it, if you get good speed on it. He hit a little faster. He's playing for the win there, obviously. He almost needs one. Just a couple of inches short on that bank shot. Hello. Well, what's he got? The three ball two railer? I don't think so. No, and if you miss this, he might leave it on the rail for a bank. Yeah, he's leaving. He's giving up the four ball if he just stops it. Yeah, or, yeah, if he just stops, it's. Oh. Was well, he, he trying to bank the it in off the? I think he was because there was no two railer there, so he had to be. We'll, 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 we'll have to ask him. Off the Let's ask there. him afterwards. Yeah, because yeah, I think he was playing off the titty. Wow. Hey, desperate times calls for desperate, desperate measures. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this! Oh, oh, he hit that short. Oh, no, that was no good. Uh, he shouldn't have even played for his ball. He's trying to spin that in, you know, like really. Yeah, he should have just played the four ball to his side by the side pocket and got behind that 11 ball. <coughs> well, Jeff needs all of them. He's stiffing. He's stiffing the ball. He's going to stiff this shot. In a way, it's a free shot unless it rattles. Yeah, it's kind of come back. Well, it did rattle. It did but rattle you know, a little bit. It didn't rattle bad. I think that uh, Vilmos is going to bank this 11 ball for the win. There's no reason not to. Do you even play to make the four at the same time? You can't do both. You can't do both from, from this position. Yeah. You yeah. got to do one or the other. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe he'll just make the four. I would I would play for the win because uh, I mean it, the shot is sitting good for if you don't make it you're gonna hang it. Yeah, I agree. The eleven is it's sitting pretty there for him. Now, if you were playing a weak weak player, yeah, you make the four. Against a good player, you need to go for the win here. This is a good. This is a good sign for Vilmos, though, because you know it's showing a little bit of who he really is, his character. And as you can see, he is showing patience here. He's showing a lot of patience for a guy who doesn't play one pocket. He's showing a lot of patience because he's really put a lot of thought into this shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you're right. I think you know when you're five balls, six balls up. And it's, yeah, well, it's a pretty yeah. easy bang. Yeah. So he's taking the four down. Uh, okay. There's good things to say about that and others, you know, but uh, I think I think the win was there. Especially see like the two and three, how they're sitting. It would be hard to position to run out. And the seven balls. too. Yeah. And the seven. He can't, you know. Yeah, so I think the, the I think the win on that bank shot was was the was the right shot. It, the, the right shot is the shot that that you don't want your opponent to shoot. And I'm sure Jeff was happy that he was just going to give him that ball. Yeah. yeah well, I wouldn't want my opponent shooting to win no. the game on that shot. No. No, you know uh, Jeff was probably hanging at the other edge of his seat. <laughs> please make my ball. Please make my ball. <laughs> well, now he's got room to breathe here. Now, now we're getting into a moving game. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. This part of the yeah. game. This is the end game we're talking here. He's three railing this. And why not? <laughs> what a great shot. 
I don't think he got much out of it, though, after this. And the three ball is too tough. He'd have to draw to get away from scratch. That means that, that anything can happen because that three ball is going to have too much speed on it. How about just, I mean, maybe just thin the eight and bring the cue ball down towards Vilmos's pocket? That's probably a good move. You don't want to bring another one into play. I mean, well, he does, but uh, maybe making the ball, in, making the eight ball and putting one just, on this side of the table. Yeah, you just want to maybe bring the cue ball to the maybe first or second diamond down towards Vilmos's pocket, right? On the side rail. Yeah. Jeff is looking at this combination. I don't like it. If he didn't make that easy oh, combination no. earlier, then this no one here is way. about 20 times yeah. tougher. Stay away. That's that's a freaking that's a hazard sign right there. <laughs> Put a stop sign in front of that red ball. <laughs> nice to see. Yeah, uh, maybe just cutting though. cutting the eight ball towards the seven ball, and leaving the cue ball back over where it is now. That way you get all your balls in play. That's true. You don't think he might? Accidentally make the eight in the side. I think mm. It might be just too. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Seven balls too far past. The problem with that shot too is, oh hello. Well, the problem with that cutting the eight ball too is, he's going to lose his cue ball a little bit. No, I think he could have controlled it because all he's going to do is just move the eight ball about three feet over, and he, he could easily control the cue ball. But look at this shot here. This is. Uh, Again, this is one of the... Oh, you cut the eight in. Yeah. No, we almost can't afford to play anything like that right now. <laughs> Come on, you don't know that shot, Frank? <laughs> Just cut the eight right in, man. <laughs> you know what? The bank shot's in order here. He can bank the eight ball and take the cue ball, bring it back to where it is right now. Yeah, if he hits the three, he's in trouble. I just got he up and looked three. at it. He hit the damn three. So he was trying to bank it over there. Uh, I didn't like that. I like you no, know. There was room for it. There really was. I looked up. I stood up and looked at it. There was room for it. He just didn't hit it well at all. You got to go for this. What do you shoot? The eight or the no, two? No, the two. You shoot the two. And Pocket speed, though. Pocket speed. Yeah, so you can shoot the eight ball next. Yeah. Well, and be so that you don't leave a bank on the two if you miss. Oh, I didn't even see the seven was available. That, that I might, didn't like that, that shot. Well, no, it actually wasn't a bad shot, because then... Yeah, probably the two ball was a better shot. Now, this is a routine shot that he's got here on the seven ball. It's all natural, no scratch, no, oh my goodness. And then there's that. <laughs> wow. Well, or if you're Vilma Schvalder, she just play the bank <laughs> a kick underneath the eight. And that's how it's done in Hungary. <laughs> no, because nobody in Hungary knows this game. What's that? No, because nobody in Hungary knows this game. <laughs> there is now. <laughs> but he's in Fresno. There's at least one now. <laughs> There's a Hungarian that knows this game, that's for sure. Hey, nice match, man. Nice match. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you on the. Uh, in the next one. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Let's ask Jeff he was, if he was trying oh, yeah. to bank that ball. Hey, Jeff. 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 How you doing, by the way? My name is Daniel, by the way. My name's Daniel, by the way. I, I had a question. Both of us were actually curious. Were you trying to play that bank off the titty earlier? No. <laughs> well, what were you going to do? Because it didn't look like you had a two-railer. So I was trying. You were trying to hit the two-railer, but you accidentally hit the point of the side pocket, right? I don't think yeah. I could have made it. Yeah. Yeah, because there were two balls in the way. Yeah, we we were just curious because you know just the way. But made it look good. Yeah, you it, did make it look good. You actually did. It looked to us that the turning point of the game is when you had that four fourteen combination, 
after you made a real nice bank and you had a 414 combo and you were oh yeah and you and you clipped the 15 with the four ball so you didn't make the combo yeah. that, that was the turning point wasn't particularly well <laughs> cuz uh, from here it looked like you had a pretty nice shot to make that yeah. combo yeah, it was a pretty easy shot it was and come back and hit the eight ball and then you were you were home free yep right. well that's yeah. where it goes actually you know just for a one game match I was saying that you should feel good about it because you actually brought it back. You brought it back around a little bit, and you know you ha you had a fighting chance, definitely. I don't get to play as much as I used to, so I'm happy with just making the money. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> Jeff, thanks a lot. It's nice to meet you, man. Nice Hope you. Hopefully, we'll see you. To hey, you got a Rum Runner shirt on. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, Jeff is Jeff from is, the old from he, the old days. He's yeah. a two-time champion, back to back at the Rum Runner. Oh, really? Are you? Awesome, man. The Andy Mercer. Yeah. See you, Jeff. Thank, thanks. Oh, uh, we're going to get a little photo op with uh, Geraldine and Frank. And, uh, well, I guess... Oh, no good? Okay. I guess we'll, we'll take a little break. Frank, it's been nice hanging out with you for a minute. Yeah, it was. Where's Boxy you know? coming back in? Yeah, we can bring him back in. Uh, we're going to get another match, possibly after this uh, but uh, I do know that there are times now when they don't want to play the final match on a diamond table because they've been playing on gold crowns all day I didn't want to play like my that. match on and then, yeah. yeah and then there's the possibility of a split so uh, yeah. if this is the last match of this one pocket event uh, you know we hope you've enjoyed it and I've definitely enjoyed sitting with you Frank so yeah. thanks well, a lot we, well let's see who's still there? Louis Ulrich is still and I think he's on the winner's side yeah and yeah. Santos Santos is on the winner's right yeah so yeah. we and still have we still have Vilmos so we have at least three more matches yeah. or at least two more if they're going to split yeah so uh, I'll be back I'll get some intel and I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this a big thanks to our sponsors uh, the Marty Carey Jump Q which uh, Marty Carey will actually be here tomorrow and he'll provide some commentary with us tomorrow. Andy Billiard Cloth. And did you also know about the Hard Times 10 and 1 event that's coming up? Is that the 10 ball in one pocket? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. know what? I just found out about it this morning. It was That's on the internet. That's because we just announced Well, yeah, it, I, it was your post that I saw <laughs> yeah, on... Yeah. Uh, on onepocket.org. Yes, yes, that's $1, true. $1,500 added. Uh, yeah. $100 entry. Yeah. Uh, that should be a that should be a nice event. I think so. Yeah, I think so, and I hope to see you play in it. I'm going to play in it. Yep. APA League, San Gabriel Valley. We want to thank them. On the snap.com. Also want to thank KamuiTips.com. And if I'm forgetting anybody, oh, the Party Bus King. That's right. Go to PartyBusKing.net and check out your next ride at your next party on the party bus king uh oh my graphics are going crazy <laughs> check out partybusking.net and uh, if nothing else give them a little email on your contact page and thank him for uh, working with POV pool there we go the, the hard times 10 and 1 open that's what we're looking at July 16th through 19th the hard times 10 and 1 open, $1,500 added 10, uh, one pocket tournament, and 5,000 added 10 ball event. Check out povpool.com to find out more about that. Well, I'll tell you, I'm definitely going to play the one pocket tournament, the 10 ball. The only way I think I, I can play that is if uh, they let me use a designated breaker. <laughs> I'll come in and break for you. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, thanks a lot. I'm going to see All if I can right. get Box back in here, yeah. and we're going to try to get you another match. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for sitting 